Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. We are here for a life update slash girl talk because honestly it's been a while and I have so much that I need to update you guys on and talk to you guys about, but I'm on my way somewhere. So I'm actually gonna do my hair first. So I don't gotta look crazy the entire time I'm talking to y'all, which needs to be washed. And I am gonna wash it sometime soon because it just needs to be washed. Um, so yeah, I want to talk to you guys about a lot of stuff that's been going on with me. I don't really know where to start. I made some notes. I should probably go get those notes. I got my notes and my Kanye book. Can you not? Actually, that's what it says. Real clever. I think I got it from like TJ Maxx or something. All right. So I guess the first thing, this is really interesting because I feel like I just come on here and, and I just chop it up with y'all and talk with y'all about like what's been going on with me and so y'all can like you know relate and we can just have conversations about it in the comments or whatever so yeah so my hair is number one a lot of people want to know what was going on with my hair i don't know if i am attached to my length or not but i kind of like having long hair because i'm kind of over wigs like i really feel like I don't know. I think I was watching Tierra Walker and she was like, you could just always see the lace. Like it really doesn't look all that natural. And I love me a good wig, sis, but like you gotta have time to like do it every single day. And it the looks that the look that it gives you is like unmatched. Like a good wig is unmatched. But you gotta have time to like do that every single day or else it just looks like a wig. It just became too much for me. Like trying to wear wigs, it just became too much for me. I don't have time to people be looking at my little, you know what I'm saying, my little grid line. I'm like, my line, my face, my mouth, my eyes are right here. And you all the way up on my forehead for what? I was getting offended by it. Like, bro, we know it's a wig. Stop looking. <laughs> and like, no matter how much you melt it, bro, you can always see the lace. So I ain't really been messing with wigs like that. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get myself a sew in. Gave myself a sew in, of course. Got heat damage from the leave out. I don't care that I got heat damage from the leave out. Actually, I low key think I like my hair better heat damaged because this part just lays so much smoother and slicker. I know it sounds like an ignorant thing to say, but whatever. I don't know, my hair has just been, I've just been kind of like over it. I don't know what I want to do with it yet. Somebody suggested locks, but I am far too high maintenance for locks. I really just enjoy a good, you know, 22 inches. <laughs> um 24 inches and i just don't ever think i could see myself in locks because i just want to change my hairstyle so much like even when i had that sewing it was extremely hard to maintain which is why i think the next thing i'm going to try is like a u-part wig or those quick little styles like the quick little ponytail that i did um so yeah i don't know what's going on with my hair i did say i was going to cut it i want to cut it i want to start over but i just don't want to start wearing wigs again and with the heat damage, I'm probably gonna have to cut it like low. And I don't have that. We all know that I ain't got the head for no low hair. Honestly, I've been seeing so many cute low styles. Like, and it's like, oh, it's so cute, you know? And they make you, what's going on with this little edge piece right here? Why can't I, why can't this get right? Come on, baby. Come on. Just real quick for me. Okay. Appreciate it. My hair is done. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this out or if I'm gonna, well, it's kind of curling up like a, dinosaur tail so i'm gonna just wrap it around so it's not all over the place i've been doing really low maintenance stuff with my hair during quarantine like buns and ponytails and you know quick styles but i also ain't been able to feel like i've been slinging all right let me get into my makeup usually i would do my eyebrows off camera but because i'm kind of pressed for time a little bit i'm just going to do them on camera and hopefully <laughs> i can talk through doing them. I haven't done my eyebrows in forever either. Oh, actually, no, I'm lying. I did just do my eyebrows because I started to get a unibrow and Miles was like, Jayla, you got a unibrow? Yeah, baby, I do. But nobody does my eyebrows, so I really had no excuse as to why I had a unibrow, so just being lazy. So yeah, that's it with my hair. Like, I'm just kind of like at a crossroads with it. I want to cut it. I don't want to cut it. I mean, I want to cut it, but I don't want to cut it low. So I might have to transition for a little while, you know, till this heat damage grow out and then cut it at a length where I feel like it would be, you know, long enough to not show the shape of my head and stuff, but it'll also be short enough to like, you know, start over and grow healthy. The reason why I just want to start over is because like my hair has not just been the same. And a lot of people 
were asking me if I thought like Diva Curl did it to my hair. And I was using Diva Curl products, but when I look back, the first PR package they ever sent me, I was pregnant. So I've been doing my hair with Diva Curl products since I was pregnant, before I was, like, since I was pregnant, since before Jax. My hair didn't really take a turn for the worse until after I was pregnant. So I really just blamed my hair change on my hormones because everything was good. Like it was good after I got it straightened. It was good after like using the Diva Curl products. And I love that melt into moisture and the Build Up Buster. And I just can't bring myself to blame Diva Curl products on my hair when I had so much other things going on, you know? I don't really think that's fair. This mirror is dirt ball, come on. So another thing is you guys want to know about how my anxiety is holding up, my ADHD and everything. I think it's pretty the same. Honestly, I think I'm starting to manage my anxiety a little bit better because honestly, it just creates a strain on my relationship relationships when I have anxiety like not even just with my husband but with like my friends and like my manager too because like I be ignoring him I don't be mean to be ignore him but you know what I'm saying you know you my dog but um I just get to ignoring people whenever I have um anxiety and it's not because I don't want to talk to people it just be like I be knowing that people be wanting stuff for me and I hate saying that because I don't want people to not want things for me or to feel like they can't bother me but really it just be the timing like the other day Jojo called me and was like hey I got a 12 page paper due at five it was like two I was like oh sis and we got up there and we finished that girl paper which she got a on but like it just be like little stuff like that but like I don't mind helping my sister you know do her paper or I don't mind helping do anybody do anything like honestly it just be the time because for some reason I seem to push off things a lot and I make excuses a lot and so when it's really time for like it's time to go I end up just panicking and then I get irritable I actually don't like NARS for my under eye I'm in love and Tarte Shape Tape Concealer for my under eye and my um eyelids lately because it just don't crease so um yeah my anxiety has been pretty the same I think I just been focusing on coping mechanisms um basically trying to make the most out of my days I really don't like the way my Adderall make me feel I take Adderall for my ADHD and a lot of the times like right now I got a real shaky hand side effects of it are like really like hard to deal with because you don't eat, which for some people will be like a good thing. Like, oh, I get to get skinny. But like when you don't eat and you forget to eat and you forget to drink, when that Adderall wears off, your body like completely shuts down. And when I shut down, I am just good for like absolutely nothing. And it's so bad because I just feel like I'm about to die right then and there. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've asked Miles, like, bro, if I just die right now, would you be mad? Because I really feel like I'm about to die. Yeah, I just been trying to find different coping mechanisms. It directly translate into um, irritability. So if I am anxious about something, I am very irritated. I have a super short fuse whenever I have anxiety or I'm feeling really anxious. I forgot to put on my primer. I'm using First Aid Beauty Primer, um, this Ultra Repair Hydroluronic Hydrating Primer. And I think I like it, y'all. I think I like it. Although it don't do much for like pores, I think it gives me like a really good base. And it's hydrating. I don't really need no hydration except for in a couple of spots. But my face is not naturally dry. It's just, I be use, the stuff I be using on it be making it dry like that. Because I only use like the soap that's in my shower for my skincare sometimes. Um, that's another thing y'all, my face is coming back to normal. Like I went through like this really rough patch with my skin for some reason where I was just getting breakout after breakout after breakout, like to the point where like, I didn't even like, it was messing with like my confidence because I just didn't understand. I never had to deal with acne, but now it's starting to go back to normal. I don't know if my hormones are leveling out now like is it normal for your hormones to still be like out of whack after having a baby my periods are still acting funny like ever since i had jacks i had um super light periods like they didn't hurt at all but before i had like almost debilitating periods like i was cramping and throwing up and i had really bad pms and now 
I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm bleeding. Until like two months ago, I had a really bad period. And like, I don't know if it was because the people I was hanging around, because the person I was hanging around, she had really bad periods too. I'm like, dang, did your, did your coochie, did your uterus rub off on my uterus? Like what happened here? Like, why is this all of a sudden so painful? Because my pain, my periods have not been painful since like before I had Jackson. So we looking at like two years of plus of non-painful periods and all of a sudden they just got painful but my last period that I just had it wasn't painful at all so I guess it's back to normal my body has just been doing whatever it wants to do like so just forget me huh like we don't need no consistency over here okay why can't I find nothing y'all what's going on here in the universe oh it's not hiding stuff I'm just not looking so I'm gonna mix these the 355 and the 312 I actually didn't um of the Maybelline fit me I actually didn't look at the color because I did it through Ulta I did curbside at Ulta so I didn't get to look at the foundation but I could have just bought it at Target but honestly I'm just trying to minimize how much I go outside but with that being said I didn't get to look at this color but I just know that this foundation that I've been wearing is just a tad too dark for me right now I also don't know my foundation brush is so that is super oh here it is so I ordered this other color foundation to kind of mix it but I didn't look at it so <laughs> I didn't know that it was as light skin as it was. So let's hope that it like mixes out well. I only have to do a little bit. I don't have to do that much. But yeah, I want to talk to you guys about something that I have been wanting to talk about for a long time. And what I just feel like I haven't really ever said anything about it for real. Oh yeah, that's light skin friend. Look like Michael Jackson right there. Yes, sir. You only need a couple dabs of that. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't ever really think I ever came out and talked to you guys about it, but that is my sexuality. I'm kind of tired of like omitting it. Like I'm kind of tired of not saying it. I'm tired of dancing around it. I, I feel like I've just been kind of like keeping it away, like sweeping it underneath the rug. And uh, every time I sweep it underneath the rug, it comes knocking back on my door, like, hey, you forgot about me. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm trying to like hide you. But it makes me feel ashamed about that. And I'm not ashamed because it's who I am. So I share everything else with you guys. And I just feel like me purposely avoiding this conversation makes me feel like maybe I do feel ashamed of it, but I'm not ashamed of it, honestly. Let me just tell y'all like the backstory. So my first kiss was actually a girl. I know a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, everybody's curious at that age, but I had my first kiss in the sixth grade with a girl. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, and uh, that is when I started to realize I actually like this one girl in fifth grade, but I'm not gonna say her name because I think she watched my channel. Um, but I like this one girl in fifth grade, and um, I just thought she was so pretty. And uh, then in sixth grade, I had my first kiss, we were on the way to Canada, and it was dark. And uh, we were, I know we had like a, a trip to Canada on um, in middle school. And uh, we were on our way to Canada and it was dark and the bus, everybody was sleeping and me and her were up. We were sitting next to each other and uh, we just started kissing, like kissing, kissing. And I was like, wow, I'm really enjoying this. So I've had boyfriends like before and uh, I'm not going to say they were the best boyfriends, but they weren't the worst. I did have this really bad one, like this really bad one. Like I wanted him to get hit by a car for the longest time, but I released that energy because... <laughs> because karma don't play that, okay? So I just wish him the best, but I really had this really one bad boyfriend. And then um, I had a girlfriend from like 10th grade to after I graduated high school. And then me and her broke up and I met Miles. And when I met him, he was just exactly what I felt like I needed. Being in a relationship with a female was extremely toxic. I don't know if it was just that female, but my relationship with her was not a good relationship and it wasn't all bad, but it definitely was like, you know, it wasn't right. Me and her broke things off. It was a difficult breakup. Like it was just a lot of drama because we were together for a really long time and um, it was just a lot of drama around it. So when I met Miles, he was so accepting of everything. I told him everything. Um, I told him about my past, you know, about... I just told him about everything. Mind you, I'm still a virgin. I've never had sex with a male at this point. And then um, I just 
never had sex with a guy because I honestly like a part of me was scared um I was so scared I didn't want to get pregnant and a part of me just didn't want to do it so um I never had sex with a guy in high school I didn't lose my virginity until I got out of high school so once I met Miles he was just so different and like this was before we even had sex or anything like we just took a little while to like know each other and just talk and he was just so damn different and I was like all right cool you know this is what I like. This is what I'm looking for. I kind of thought that my attraction to women had went away. Well, pfft. over the years, um, I see a girl and I'll be like, wow, she's really pretty. Um, or wow, I really like her personality. And I could never, of course, first of all, I'm in a committed relationship. So I could never like, you know, become more than that with people. But also that wasn't like something that was like fully a part of me. First of all, I don't feel like I look that way. You know what I'm saying? Like it's really hard to find or recognize feminine girls that like girls because we just look like we like everything you know like you can't really tell us apart from any other average girl that only dates men yeah it's always been like really hard for me like to disclose that with people especially like someone that I was interested in or someone that I would like someone that I could be potentially interested in and I just it felt weird like it felt weird it felt like I was holding something back when I would have these friends that I would look at in a different light than they would look at me in because you know they didn't look at me that way but of course I always kept it cool because I didn't be like no weirdo or nothing but yeah that just was not like it's just not fun doing that and I kind of just want to say it and just put it out there I think I'm just tired of hiding from it like even when I came out to my mom and I told her like hey ma I really think I like girls she was like are you sure she never like shunned me for it. she really did not like my girlfriend like at all but for good reasons you know because mom was knowing stuff like that it's not like she didn't like me being who I was she just did not like my girlfriend at all and I could totally see why um, now that I'm older. But yeah, like I told my mom and she was like, are you sure? And my immediate family was completely accepting of it because I never hit it. My girlfriend was very uh, prominent in my life and I just never hit it. I brought her to family functions. We went to prom together and never like hit it. I had, did have like other family members that weren't really like messing with it for real. And that kind of made me feel ashamed of it a little bit. Like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be so forward with this, you know? And honestly, I regret feeling that way because I think that's where these feelings come at now. Just kind of like the fear of rejection because I don't want anybody to ever not love me for who I am. You know, like I know some people are, you know, going to dislike some things that I do, but I don't ever want to feel like not loved for the person that I feel like I can't help that I am. With that being said, I had conversations with those family members that I felt that way about because it's just kind of water underneath the bridge. Those negative feelings that I had still remain. But I think those that feeling of rejection and just misunderstanding is like, you know, that feeling of feeling like you're embarrassing somebody is just still really like stuck to me. And I don't think I want to feel that way ever again. So maybe that's why I kind of like never really came out and said it. But to be honest with y'all, I think I'm just tired of dancing around it. Okay, I just want to let it be known that this is who I am and it's a part of me. So <laughs> it's difficult because I have this attraction to women and I have this ability to fall in love with them. And I want to know about her and I want to like, I just want to just know her on a deeper level. I'm not talking about a specific her, by the way. I have a son and I'm married. So my situation's a bit complicated. Some things are just gonna have to like be the way they are because the things that I get from a female and the things that I get from a male are two different things. Like Miles makes me feel safe. He makes me feel secure. Um, he has that like dominance, you know what I mean? Like, but he's also, Miles is kind of like a, he's kind of like the best of both worlds because Miles is really actually sensitive. Miles has a very sensitive side to him that you guys don't really see that much because we just joke and play so much, but he's actually really kind and gentle, but also like he's rough where he needs to be. So I just feel like I get two different things from separate parties. I wouldn't be in a 
full term, you know, at the stage of my life that I'm in now, what I'm looking for is what Miles is giving me. Sometimes I can't lie and say that I don't crave a woman's touch or I don't crave like more sensitive, you know, type of relationship because Miles he is softer, but he's still a man and brains are just like hardwired differently. If I had to live without one, it would definitely be, you know, the woman because with my baby and with my lifestyle now, um, stability, comfort, protection is definitely something that I feel like takes priority. You know, I feel so safe when I go to sleep at night with Miles. Like I feel so safe here. Like I feel safe with my baby. I just feel so safe. I know that's like really broad to say but I just feel safe with him like I feel like nothing can go wrong while I'm with him I feel like I'm totally protected all the time um with that being said <laughs> my desires of wanting a relationship with a woman would just kind of have to be supplemental you know like it's not something that is ever gonna become a normal for me it's not something that is I'm gonna I don't ever well I'm not gonna say ever but I don't see myself waking up and you know saying miles I don't love you anymore I just want to be a woman like I don't see that happening but I just can't ignore these growing feelings that I have like they're just loud honestly it has me feeling some type of way because when I first talked to miles about it I'm like babe I think I'm like reverting back to what I used to like and um he's like oh i've been through that you know like acting like he know me or whatever yeah we had a conversation about it and you know he doesn't mind it he doesn't mind it i told him that there's no need for him to feel intimidated by it because a female could never do for me what miles does for me you know number one he's the father of my baby and um number two i just like i said it's two different experiences it's just two different ballparks it's just two different you know they're different so yeah i said it it's out there y'all know yay i'm happy this is something that it took me a long time to come to terms with and I think that um, for a long time, I was kind of afraid to share it because I didn't know how people would react, but I don't care no more, girl. I don't give a goddamn, all right? I don't care. I do not care, no more. That said, what's next? Okay, so you guys also wanted to know about my therapy, how I've been going, and girl, let me tell you, okay? I'm trying to learn to speak on my channel like people are actually watching because it is a small world, okay? And I be forgetting how many people know how many people. And I don't know if my therapist watched my um, YouTube channel, but she used to be my therapist. And my I have a therapist and I have a psychiatrist. My psychiatrist is the one that prescribes me my medicine. And my therapist is the one that I go to talk to on like a weekly, bi-weekly basis, depending on what's going on in my life, right? Y'all, she was, you know, you know, and... I just found myself lying to this lady right in her face. Like my therapy was not effective at all. The therapist that I just had was not effective at all. Cause I was just lying to this lady. I'm talking about lying bad. Like, so how's everything going? Oh, everything's going great. Everything's going great. How you doing? How, how, what's new in your life? What's going on? Well, everything's going great. Yes, 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 yes. My credit score is 850. Uh, we have uh, approximately uh, $100,000 in the bank. And uh, my baby, he can speak Arabic now, even though he only one and a half. Yes, everything is going great. Lying, like bad. Like, I feel like I could not talk to her because number one, I felt like we just in two different worlds, girl. Like, because you don't know what it's like to be me. Number one, this is why it's important to have a black therapist if you are black. She was older, so not only do we have, you know, you don't live in my world, but you are also a lot older than me. She was a very, very nice lady, and I could just tell, like, she could try to relate to me, but, like, it just wasn't working. So, I just started lying, like, telling her that everything was okay, because at this point, I'm just trying to, like, I don't want to make black people look bad, so I don't want to go into debt with all my problems. So I was lying to this lady about my life, acting like it was perfect, and then not telling her my full truth, so she couldn't really help me. I kind of stopped going to her, and I feel bad because I just kind of disappeared. And I feel like I would hate for somebody to just disappear on me because I would just be like, what did I do wrong? And she didn't do anything wrong. It's just that we are in two different lives. Like, we are just two different people 
two different worlds. It's I feel like it's almost impossible for her to relate to me. So therefore, I need to find a new therapist. Um, I actually think I have one and I haven't just got around to like actually calling and scheduling an appointment, but they are up in Richmond and baby, I do not want to drive that far. We used to live really close to Richmond, but now since we moved, we don't live close to Richmond at all. And I don't know if I want to make that drive. If you guys know resources, go ahead and comment down below. Maybe you'll help somebody out. So, um, yeah, uh, therapy is a, a bust. <laughs> I will update y'all on my new therapist when I find him or get him because I think it's a male. So yeah, that's that. Also, you guys wanted to know about owning a house and being a homeowner. Y'all, honestly, it's not bad. Like, if y'all would talk to me last year, I'm like, I'm not buying a house. I don't want to buy a house. I know y'all heard me say that a bunch of times because I just was honestly so scared. Like, I was just so used to paying rent and no friends that I had had have houses. And I don't know, I think I was just in a, like, I had a mental block. I was so scared. I didn't want to do it. But now owning a house is not bad. We've only owned the house for since, you know, March, a couple of months now. And um, girl, the more you live in a house, the more you start to see how much they cut corners and stuff. And it's like, wow, like, wow. Let me just go outside and build a house right quick since y'all just throwing them up like this. Um, but our house buying process was extremely easy because we had a awesome realtor. And I don't know if y'all say realtor or realtor, but I say realtor. But we had an awesome realtor and um, she made the process super easy. She was like so down for us. She told us everything up front. There was no surprises. She was informational. It wasn't, it's not, it hasn't been bad. Now living next to people permanently, that's been the most hard, like that's been the hardest part. And another part that's been bad is like cutting the grass. Like just the maintenance of a house is just a lot of maintenance. And that was honestly like the thing that I did not want to deal with was the maintenance. Um, but having so much more space is so much more worth it because it's just so much more worth it. We just have so much space and like, I just feel like I'm doing Jack's right. This was your house, you know, back when you were this age and it just feels good. So yeah, it's not bad. It's just gonna take a while to like get used to like living next to the same people, you know, because you try to be like neighborly or whatever. I think a lot of what you guys want to know is about like saving and about like the money part and um, stuff like that. And Miles been in the military played a big role in us buying a house so fast. Our house was a little bit out of our budget, so we did have to have a down payment, a pretty good down payment. And um, that is where my YouTube comes into play. And I think that's how our relationship works out a lot where, you know, he is the steady, consistent, and I am the more like sporadic, you know, um, make it fast, make it quick, make a lot real fast type thing. And it just kind of works out. It just kind of works out for us. So yeah, I'm actually about to be freaking late. So that's great. It wasn't a bad process at all. Our credit was already like straight and everything because having too much debt gives me anxiety. So I don't like having any bills. Anytime I get a bill in the mail, I just pay it immediately. Except for my orthodontist bill because they don't actually send me a bill. I just gotta go pay that, but I do really bad at that. <laughs> I got the money y'all, I just be forgetting to pay y'all. But it's okay, I paid it off in full today because I just ain't got time for them to be playing around my braces. I actually don't think I'll have to do lashes today. I actually don't think I have time to do lashes. It'd probably be stupid of me to try to put lashes on right now because I'm actually running out of time. And um, you guys wanted a BBL update. So my booty is pretty like consistent now. It's definitely lost a lot of projection. And a lot of people want to know like if I would have surgery again ever since I had, um, now I said I'm not having any babies anymore. And honestly, yeah, I would. I just don't want to do nothing else to my butt because I don't know what all is left in there and I don't want to put more in there and then if I gain weight, it looks crazy. But I definitely would get surgery again, maybe on like my stomach or something because it's no sense of walking around with loose skin. I mean, I'm comfortable with it, but like if I could go back to what my body used to be, that I definitely would do that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to tell me to because I don't want the scar. I don't know. I just, I have been like researching it, but I don't know if I want to spend that bread on that. I'm not as, uh, I guess, frivolous as I used to be when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, I'm still bad. Like I'll still come home with like a new car or some crazy stuff, but like, 
I don't know. Like, I'm still impulsive, but like, I don't know. I don't, if, I can, if I don't see it's worth it, then I'm not gonna do it. So it's not bothering me that bad to the point where I'm like, all right, we about to spend this money on this. You know what I'm saying? Like owning a house, you definitely need like a lot of cushion money for a rainy day. Just in case, you know, the roof decides it wants to fall through or, you know, some crazy stuff like that. Definitely a lot more money conscious now after buying a house. Yeah. Oh, breastfeeding. Wow. Breastfeeding a toddler is difficult. Like, I'm not even about to sit up here and lie to y'all. It's so difficult. Um, That fulfilling feeling that I had breastfeeding him as an infant is honestly fading away. Like, it's not like I don't feel like I'm doing a good deed anymore. Like, I don't feel like I'm doing good for my baby. I actually am tired of people telling me what to do with my baby and he should wean. So, I'm kind of tired of, like, the unnecessary comments. And somebody could really not mean no harm and I would probably just snap on them like, bro, mind your business, mind your titties, mind your own, you know, whatever. I'm already struggling enough because he entitled as hell, he abusive, he rough, like it is definitely rough nursing a toddler. Breastfeeding is supposed to be this glorious thing. Well, it is this glorious thing that you could do for your baby and, you know, like it's so natural and it's so praised but once you get past a certain age it becomes like society does not want that and just mixed with the feelings of them naturally being like a natural like toddler you know you know how it's a norm for babies to cry like it's not like it's a norm for toddlers to be like independent you know like people want toddlers to grow up a lot faster than they are supposed to and when they see a nursing toddler they just look at codependency jackson can survive without me he eats regular food um, he's a normal baby. It's just, he's entitled. He thinks that my body is his. And that is really hard to deal with. If you guys want me to do another separate video about that, um, breastfeeding a toddler, I absolutely can. This is all I'm going to give y'all today. Because honestly, this is all I have time for. And, um, I will see you guys in my next video. Damn, I still didn't talk about so much. I'm supposed to talk about YouTube. I'm supposed to talk about so much, but it's okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? We gonna, we gonna, I'm gonna see y'all. I'm gonna see y'all, okay? Peace out.